G'day, I'm Tony from the Australian Window Association. Today, we're going to be installing an aluminium commercial grade sliding window into a prepared masonry opening using an aluminium subframe. Tools we need include a spirit level, hammer, tape measure, utility knife, drill, impact driver, hacksaw, pop rivet gun, corking gun and a metal file. There are a few things we'll need. Packers, subsill end dams, pop rivets, preferably colour matched, polyurethane sealant, masonry plugs, stainless steel screws. Carry out a structural tolerance check to ensure the opening is roughly level, plumb and square and suitable for the window being installed. Ensure your window is the appropriate size to suit the opening, allowing for at least 10mm clearance on both sides. Also, check that adequate clearance is provided above and below the window to allow for subhead and subsill systems. Individual clearances may vary depending upon the size of the subframe being used. Consult the window supplier's technical literature for guidance. Check the opening preparation. It's critical that the waterproofing membrane has been applied to the four sides of the opening in accordance with Australian standards, AS4654.2 and AS4773 prior to window installation. The membrane must be free of any holes or gaps that would allow water to penetrate the block substrate and must have good adhesion to the substrate. The waterproofing membrane must be compatible with the sealants used in the frame installation. This should be confirmed well before the installation during the planning process. Incompatibility issues can result in failure of the waterproofing systems. It's really important that you do not commence installation if the waterproofing is not fit for purpose. Cut the subsill to suit the opening. It should not be a tight fit and some clearance should be allowed for thermal expansion. Locate the subsill in the opening 10mm clear of the external finish of the wall to allow for drainage. While the subsill is in position, mark the location of the water stop angle. Pre-drill the fixing holes at equal spacings appropriate for the gauge of fastener and wind load or to the engineer's specifications. Then remove the subsill to clean away the dust. Fit the water stop angle in position and seal. Fit the subsill dams and ensure an adequate seal at each end. Locate the packers over the fixing holes and apply the sealant where the waterproofing has been drilled. Apply a liberal amount of sealant at each corner underneath the subsill ends. Position the subsill and fix off. Apply sealant to the corners and overseal the fixings to ensure a watertight seal. Cut the subhead to length allowing adequate clearance for thermal expansion. Position the subhead so that it is directly above and parallel to the subsill. Pre-drill the fixings with gauge and spacing to the engineer's specifications. Apply two runs of sealant, one each side of the fixings. Put the subhead into place and fix off. Overflashing may be necessary in some situations where the subhead is exposed to water from above. Next, fit the internal fixing angles to the jams. Measure and cut the angles to length. Mark and drill for the fixings and fix into place using the appropriate number and gauge of fixings for the wind load. Vertical angles must be corked to the adjoining structure to prevent moisture ingress. Ensure sealant is applied appropriately where waterproofing has been drilled. Apply sealant to the internal perimeter of the jam angles. 
Lift the window into the subhead and push down into the subsill. Ensure the overall window placement is correct. Plumb the jams and fix off from the inside through the internal fixing angle. Fit the sash and check the window operation. Measure and cut the angles to length. Apply a line of sealant to both the frame and the wall where the trim angle is to be positioned. Then bed the trim angle into this sealant. For aesthetic reasons, trim angles are generally installed with the angle turned in under the frame. These trim angles are not considered structural and are only used to trim the gap between the frame and the structure and act as a rain screen. They may be installed using a minimum number of rivets. Generally subsills are fitted with a continuous compression seal to seal the gap between the internal leg of the subsill and the window seal. However, in some circumstances, including high wind load areas, a wet seal along the internal gap between the window and subsill may be required. A wet seal is also applied between the subsill and water stop angle. Ideally, as this will be visible, a colour match sealant should be used. Well that's it for this video. Check out the other videos in this series for information on installing other window types. Thanks for watching.